Hello, welcome to Geeky Hijinx, home of the Mischief Makers, and today isn't a weekly update video, it's more of a what I watch through the whole of February. And the main reason for this was the first two weeks of Feb, I wasn't feeling too well. Come the third week, I was working back on my office, so I was getting back to that routine, and I was trying to fit so many things in, my own videos, life, you know how it goes. And then come the fourth week, I thought there's no point in me doing a what I watch between week one to three, I might as well just get February out of the way and do a monthly update video instead. Now this won't be a common occurrence, but it depends really. If I'm going on holiday, you might get it in two weeks, three weeks, but I will stick to my weekly updates as best as I can. So, I got my phone ready of what I watch. Now surprisingly enough, you're probably thinking, oh my God, we're gonna be here for 10 years waiting to see what he's watched. But because of what I mentioned, I didn't watch too much, but I watched enough for a hopefully interesting video. And as always, I'm gonna do this all in one take because why the hell not? I like to live life on the edge. And if you don't follow me on Instagram or on Letterboxd, make sure you do so you can see what I'm going to watch or what I'm going to talk about before I actually record myself talking about it. So, the first film I watched in February, and I've got this in order for once. Good times. Now, the first film I watched um, this month was a Shudder film that came out two years ago, I think. And it's called VFW, which stands for Veterans of Foreign Wars. And essentially it stars all the classic 80s actors that you've probably seen in films like Karate Kid. In fact, I forget his name now, but his name, but the guy in Karate Kid and Cobra Kai's in this. Um, the, the dude, I forget his name now, he's in Avatar and Don't Breathe. I'm really bad with actors' names for some reason lately, I keep forgetting everything. But essentially, it's about this um, egg servicemen's club, is what we'd call it in the UK, or Veterans of War. They've got this little club just for themselves. And across the road, it, there's like this um, block of flats or apartments that are dishing out this drug. And this drug is like the drug to have. You, you, people are hooked. They need it. It'll kill people over it. One girl ends up dying as a result. And her sister wants revenge. So she steals this big, basically, this, this apartment block's whole stash of drugs worth millions. And runs of it to the veteran's place, the veteran's bar hides out there and essentially these criminals are trying to break in and these veterans of war are trying to defend it and this is like so 80s it's so over the top very cheesy very gory in places and i loved it if you liked films like dread which was on a bigger scale because this is just one floor which is a bar dread was many many floors in a big big building you get those similar vibes but if you like Good old fashioned 80s fun with a lot of gore. VFW is where you want to go, and I gave this one 4 out of 5 geeky coins. Now, the next one I watched, by the way, I'm sweating like there's no tomorrow because, uh, you know, great outfit choice. Like, one day I'm going to wear a vest. But the second film I watched was Jackass Forever. And this, I used to watch Jackass all the time, basically my teenage years. Me and my mates used to watch it on MTV, used to watch it on a Friday, talk about it on Monday, seen all the films. It's just very nostalgic for me, but it was just really good. I just fancied a laugh. Like a good old fashioned trip to the cinema where you could just laugh out loud with other people around you laughing too. And that's exactly what happened with this film. Last time I had an experience like that was with Borat and Bruno. And sometimes you just, you know, like for me, comedies aren't great anymore. Like try and think now of like the, one of the best comedies you've seen in recent years, and you and for those who watch every film, you can probably think of some, but think of the mainstream movies, the ones that actually come out in the cinema. I can't think of too many. So for me, it's probably my favourite comedy to be released in the cinema in many years. It made me gag in points. There was one scene involving a pig. Don't get me like nothing happened to the pig, but something involving something from a pig and. The whole cinema, including me, was like going. Whoa, whoa. It was it was disgusting, and uh, I gave Jackass Forever four out of five geeky coins. And if you just want a good old-fashioned laugh, just to let go after a stressful week of work, give it a go. Now this one I've seen floating around. I know um, my dude D Movie Man said, "Hey, you should watch this when you get a chance." And this is the Last Jewel. Now this came out in the cinema. Didn't seem like my cup. It didn't seem like my. I can speak English. I. Do promise you it didn't seem like my cup of tea and i saw some reviews saying it's boring 
goes on too long, very repetitive. But it was D Movie Man's review that made me think, you know what, well, this is sounds pretty cool. Like he sold it to me really well, and uh, he does that very, very well on his channel. Makes me watch a lot of things that I would never watch. Watch him, good times. Um, essentially, the last jewel. If you have not watched it, it's basically set on, like set on a true story many years ago. I think it was in the 13th or 14th century. I forget. And this, the film has three different stories shown over and over. See, and essentially it's about uh, Jodie Comer's character. I forget her name, but she is attacked by one of the characters played by Adam Driver. I'm forgetting. I'm remembering actors' names. Um, so essentially you've got Matt Damon, Adam Driver and Jodie Comer and you're seeing events play out from their perspective so you see Matt Damon's perspective, Adam Driver's perspective and then you see the victim of Jodie Comer's character's perspective to see what actually happened and each one varies in different ways and whew, like I told it, it's really warm in here you can probably hear me going <laughs> but um, I'm about to get some, I mean, no, I don't normally cut, but I may have to stop for a second to get some water because I think this could be my last video. But I liked it a lot. The jewel at the very end is amazing, very visceral. Reminded me of Gladiator, which isn't surprising because Ridley Scott made this. The acting is great. The only thing I would say is it takes about maybe 20 minutes for you to really get going because it just takes a while getting there. But when it when the ball starts rolling, it's very entertaining. And I think some of the scenes are repetitive in my opinion especially the middle one the middle story from adam driver's perspective they show a lot of the same scenes and i get it to see two different perspectives but you could have cut that down quite a bit or just kind of got rid of it entirely but that's removes the point of the film but i had a good time with this one and i gave it three and a half out of five geeky coins and i've got to stop for a second to get water because i'm boiling mm. okay i'm hydrated now so Another film I watched, I won't go into it too much because I've got a review up for this one already on my channel, so check it out. And that's Uncharted. I was horrified by the casting choices in, in the beginning. I was put off by the trailer, but I was turned around during the film. I had a good time in this one. I liked Tom Holland as Nathan Drake. Mark Wahlberg as Sully. Still not sold, but he still was entertaining. And I had a good time in this one. It was like a National Treasure Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones sort of hybrid. And I'd like to see a sequel, and I know lots of people hated this film because of the casting choices, but, you know, just get a big like big box of popcorn, chill out, watch it, have a good time. Don't take life so seriously. And uh, if you are going to watch this on my channel, the review, I gave it a 4 out of 5 geeky coins. Whew, man, I need to... The radiator is on. I just realised now, I'm like, why is it... Why is that thing red? Now this film is mucho, uh, <laughs> mucho, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say then, mucho controversial, and that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the latest movie to come out from the franchise on Netflix, and um, yeah, like, I, apart from some amazing kills, some of the best kills I've seen in a long time, didn't really rate this one, you know, like, looks good, but I like the grimy look of the first, so, but the kills are amazing, but in the first one you didn't see the kills, but you felt the kills. Like, the new one is visually a treat. The first one, you just felt, like you felt every, like when that girl was put on the hooks, you could feel, you just, you could imagine and feel what it was like, that that flight that happened to her. And so, uh, like I've got a review for this up as well, check it out to see like more of my thoughts, but Jeremy, I just thought, yeah, like I wasn't too impressed with this one and then uh, if I wanted to watch it again, I wouldn't. I'd probably just watch the bus scene on YouTube or something. And I gave it a two and a half out of five geeky coins. Now, I did a, a watch along with uh, v uh, Video Tasties. <laughs> I was about to say VD, but that's something completely different. Um, yeah, Video Tasties invited me onto his channel. I put a link to that below. And we watched Arachnophobia together, a film I don't think I've seen since I was 10. I love this film back in the days, you know, VHS tapes, didn't have much choice, no Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, no Sky, you know, not like, no, can't pause your channels, can't record anything, you just had what you had, you put it on, and I watched Arachnophobia tons, I loved it, loved Jeff Daniels, in this film, I was like, hey, I reckon, like, like this is when I first realised, hey, the same actor in that film is in this film, but Arachnophobia is just pure, pure nostalgia, 
can't take it too seriously. Just like a bunch of spiders that are on the loose in this town. And what I liked about it is the spiders aren't monsters. They just happen to be in the wrong place that the other people are in. And they're protecting themselves like bees and people are dying. But very cool. Now, hmm. This one is uh, very interesting to me. Candyman, the, the newest one that came out last year. Now, I've got problems in this one. And the same, for, same problems I have with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Is that they're spiritual sequels of the original. But they kind of lost focus or lost the idea of what made the original great. Like Candyman, like I mentioned it in my letterbox review, it took me a very long time to really watch that from start to finish. Not because it was like the scariest thing I've seen. It just made didn't make me feel good. Like it was very, very visceral, very grimy and dirty, and you just didn't feel safe. Like I've never seen an environment like that before. Like those tower blocks with the graffiti and that, like graffiti art with candy man's mo like mouth wide open really freaked me out as a kid i don't know why but that film just seemed a bit more raw a bit more edgy for a horror for me me anyway like I, like i didn't watch too many horrors when i was younger but that was one of them and that was one that kind of freaked me out the most and watching this one like visually looks great it has some amazing amazing shots like the kills like more gore like if you're gonna go all the way like if i think this was an 18 Go all the way, go extreme, but they kind of make it seem like a, a 15 well, rating in the UK. Um, but my, one of my issues with the film is the, the social, the politics behind it. Well, it's a bit too heavy handed. Now the first film was very subtle, but very effective. And most films you can have a, a political like message in there. But you've got to do it with a bit more finesse. And Candyman was just way too heavy handed for my, my liking anyway. Um, because it, it was an interesting concept, like a group of people's rage personified in one man. That's that's an amazing concept, but I didn't really go with that. So um, the, the original was me is always going to be better for me. I gave this the same as Texas, and that was um two and a half out of five geeky coins. Now this is a film, and like I were I, my thing, I love to do is watch other films, believe it or not, and review them. Now I missed out two reviews for other films, and in those two weeks I wasn't feeling well. And one of them is called They Live in the Grey, which I haven't even seen yet. I put it on the other day and I fell asleep because I was tired from work. But I put this one on the other day and I wasn't expecting much from this at all. And it was called All the Moons. Now, I knew, I knew it was about vampires. And I'm not a big fan of vampire films at all. They just kind of bore me. There's nothing new to them. Like Blade, great. The Lost Boys, fantastic. Salem's Lot, great. Nosferatu, OG. Like, good. Um... Bram Stoker's Dracula with, oh, I'm going to kill myself for getting his name, but the one that was made by um, Francis Ford Coppola, oh, I can't forget his name, the actor that played vamp the Dracula, um, oh well, so vampire films for me aren't great, and all the vampire films that come out on Shudder didn't do it for me at all, even Jake's wife, I thought was really overrated, but All the Moons is cool because even though I'm the vampire, the vampire element is there, but it's it's like not the main focal point. It's like a, a a curse. It's showing the curse more of being a vampire, and essentially it's about this little girl, and she's in this orphanage, and it's um, destroyed in this war, and she's dying, and this vampire comes up to her, and they all look normal. There's no like fangs or blair or anything like that. It's just normal women who are like, "Do you want to live?" And the girl's like in pain. Yes, please, please save me. This is this isn't in Spanish, by the way, so it's got subtitles. And she's like, okay, and she gives her a kiss. There's no biting, it's just a kiss. And that transforms her into a, a vampire, but not visually, with more the eternal side, but they also need to feed on blood. So it could be human blood or animal blood, but blood of some kind. And it's more of a coming of age story because she gets uh, separated from her vampire clan, her family, and she has to go about it on her own and survive. And the sun, like sun still hurts them because that's like a vampire trait. It's more about her just trying to cope with having this disease of being a vampire and trying to fit in with society, trying to find the family she's always wanted, while also watching them grow old and die and seeing how she copes with that. And I enjoyed it. Like for me, it's not a horror. It just has a horror theme running throughout. But like I said, it's more of a coming of age story. And I recommend if you if it sounds interesting to you to go check it out because this was this wasn't my thing, but I liked it.
and I gave it um, three out of five geeky coins. Now the next day I watched another shutter, the latest one called Hellbender. I need some more water. Pause! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing too good with this whole one take thing today, am I? But it's really hot in here and like, I need to rethink my outfit for the summer because I'm going to die. So in the last film I watched, I oh, know the second to last film I watched this week was Hellbender on Shudder, the most recent Shudder original and or Shudder exclusive. And it's good. And I recommend you watch it. But my review, my video review comes out on a couple of days after this. And you can see all my thoughts there. But yeah, I was impressed. But the last film I watched this week was um, Death on the Nile. Now Death on the Nile was a funny one because my mum loves a TV show with um, David Suchet. Uh, I always get his name wrong. But he plays the character of Hercule Poirot. My mum watches all the shows. And I've, when I was living at home, I used to work out in the living room. And my mum was watching TV. I used to watch it. And pretend I wasn't watching, but being interested. I'd uh, drive her nuts. Because I'd be like, she's the killer. He's the killer. They're the killer. She'd be like, oh, can you stop watching this? You're ruining it for me. But... So watching this was very nostalgic and I thought to myself, oh, like, this isn't really my thing. But it was. I actually really enjoyed this and I kind of forget I do like a murder mystery. I like Knives Out. Um, there's a TV show I'm watching, which I'm going to be speaking about in a second. Uh, it's kind of the same. And I haven't seen the first one, Murder on Orient Express. But you don't really need to because each story is separate and maybe a few characters appear in the other ones. But... It's not too detrimental to the to your watch your film watching experience. But Death of the Nile was cool. Um Kenneth Branagh directs it and stars as Poro. Good Gal Godot and Russell Brown was like literally I was in the cinema the cinema watching this and I was like Dawn Friend Jennifer's Russell Brown what's happening? Why why are these people in here? I was like shocked I I didn't know the casting. So it was a very cool surprise. But what kills me? Kills me about these um, murder mysteries, especially Pro. And I said to my girlfriend a couple of days beforehand, and I always said to my mum, it, it's the same thing. Every film and every TV episode. Literally, someone will go to bed, and then they'll cut to the morning, and you see a maid or a butler carrying up the breakfast on the silver tray, and they go into the bedroom, and then you just they just drop the tray and scream. And it, just, it happened in this film, and I cracked up in the cinema, because I was like, oh my god. I thought it was just a TV trope, but maybe there was like a send up by Kenneth Branagh to include that in there as like a little in joke. But it made me laugh. And and uh, the one thing that did disappoint me about this film is that no one said, My God, Pro. Because they always said that in the TV show. So, um, uh, nitpick. But I gave uh, Death on the Nile. Go away, lady. Uh, that was just a picture of like. It, I'm not speaking to anyone. <laughs> I didn't get a text from anyone just then. I'm like saying, go away. Just random like film poster popped up. But yeah, I gave that three and a half. And that was the films I watched for the whole month of February. Now moving on to animes. Finished Demon Slayer season two. Fantastic. The, the second to last episode contains some of the best animation and fight scenes I've ever seen in an, like in anything, in any like cartoon or anime in this instance. The story is great, a comic for season 3. If you love your anime and you haven't checked this out, which I severely doubt you haven't watched this if you do like anime. But if you don't, give this a go because it's definitely worth it. It's such a great show. And I gave you season 2, 5 out of 5 geeky coins. Now moving on to the TV shows I watched. Um, I watched Yellow Jackets after seeing so many people praise it. Didn't know what it was about. And... Um, it was great, really, really enjoyed it. Like I binged it with my girlfriend over one, would have been one weekend, but we didn't have enough time. So over the course of uh, a week, we watched it together. And it was great. It's kind of like a, ah, uh, like, um, what's that book called? The Lord of, is it Lord of the Flies? <laughs> I forget the name of the book now, but you do know what I mean. And um, Lost. And if you haven't watched it, essentially about some young girls in a football team. They're going to the nationals, they get in a plane, the plane crashes in the middle of nowhere in this dense forest and then the story goes forward about what 30 years something like that and you see them as or less 20 25 years and you see them as adults or some of them as adults and it goes back and forth between what happened when they were girls what's the secret they're hiding then them to as adults trying to like there's like a conspiracy or there's like a someone investigating them 
So it's like, I don't want to give away too much because I want you to watch it and enjoy it yourself. But Christina Ritchie is amazing in this TV show. I love this. She's my favorite character in this. Every time she came on, I became happier inside because she's mad. <laughs> but yeah, I gave this some four out of five geek queens. Definitely recommend it. Uh, the other TV show I'm watching um, from Sean, I lost in the reels recommendation. That was Severance on Apple TV. Um, amazing. Like, and it's so frustrating because it's one episode a week and I forget that about Apple TV. So I was switching episode one, episode two, episode three is next Friday. Oh no. But it's a fantastic TV show. I severely, <laughs> no pun intended, I um, recommend you watch it because it is great. And essentially it's a kind of a horror story in a way. It's uh, about this company called Lumen and they have this, um, their staff have to have this chip in their brain and it basically makes them forget who they are on the outside so, so they only have a work self so it's like you going to work you get in the elevator which is what happens here in this TV show once it gets past a certain floor the chip kicks in and their work self appears but they there's no recollection of who they are on the outside who their family are they married they have kids who are they all they know is their work self and what's horrifying about this is when they go down the elevator that's all they know all they know is going down the elevator and going up the elevator working finishing work so the work cells never get to chill out after work or relax on the weekend or go on a holiday that's just up and down the elevator working and the outside they're trying to they don't know who they're like completely different to their work cells my battery ran out fantastic so as I was saying, their outside cells are completely different to their work cells. Like they could be one could be really optimistic, one could be really grumpy, but it's the same person. So it's really interesting. And there's this ex coworker that was fired from this company that reaches out to one of the main characters and to try and investigate what's going on. But what's cool is they can only investigate on the outside. But when his work self goes inside, He's forgotten why or like if there's a little plan or if he's meant to be investigating anything at all. It's very cool. Definitely check it out. And uh, the, another TV show I'm watching, again, Sean recommended this to me. And that was on uh, Disney Plus called uh, Murder in the Building. Hilarious. It's with Steve Martin, uh, Selena Gomez and Martin Short. It just cracked me up because <laughs> I love them actors anyway. I love that. It's a very, I love their dry sense of humor. Huge Steve Martin fan. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels is one of my favorite films of all time. Amazing. And like it was a murder mystery. I just like, I fancied him. And it is really, really good. Like I like the story. They're like, essentially all three of them live in the same apartment block. There's a murder in there, murder in the building. And they are all true crime horror, like true crime horror fans, true crime fans. And I have listened to this podcast that investigates true crimes that are unsolved. And so they all band together to try and solve this one. And there's some twists and turns. Maybe some backstabbing or double crossing. And But the humour is great. Really, really good humour. And some very surreal moments. Including a cat and a freezer. That's all I'm going to say. Haven't watched all of it. But I'm really enjoying it. I'm also watching Peacemaker. For a peace, Peacemaker. Pe <laughs> That's like a Geordie then. Peacemaker. Um, pe peace. I can't remember. I can't even read. What's wrong with me today? Uh, Peacemaker. Wow, that was way more of a struggle than it should have been. And that's with uh, that's a spin-off TV show from Suicide Squad um, starring John Cena. And I've only seen like four episodes, but again, really impressed with it. I didn't like his character in Suicide Squad. I like his character now. Amazing intro to the TV show. Everyone knows about it by now. Really catchy. I never skip it because it's just, you need to watch it. But it's just really funny. Very over the top. Very eccentric. Yeah, so um, if you are watching it, definitely watch it. But it is like very hard R. So like, maybe not watch with your mother. Other TV shows, man, well, I watch more TV shows than damn films. Other TV shows I blitzed through is Mandalorian Season 2, The Book of Boba Fett. Enjoyed them both. Binged them all both in one day. Really good TV shows. Book, like Book of Boba is essentially Mandalorian Season 2.5. But I really, really enjoyed it. And like, like if you're a Star Wars fan, of course you would have seen it. But yeah. Binge those bad boys like literally in like two days. 
Uh, and what I'm watching at the moment, which is super addictive, is All of Us Are Dead on Netflix. Koreans, they're just amazing. If you've watched uh, Train to Busan, which I mentioned in my last video for weekly updates, great, great feel, like great TV show. Or oh, that's a great film. This is a great TV show. And essentially, he's in this high school, and there's this science teacher as a son, and he does experiment with his son, and which makes him into this zombie, and then something happens, and the whole school gets infected, and it's just like Train to Busan. They even reference it, which is cool, makes it more self-aware. So addictive. Love the characters. Why is Korean like TV shows and and movies just they can't fail for me? They're, they're so so good. So if you love your Zombie films, lots of gore, but great characters. If you like anime as well, because it has like a little anime feel to it, definitely watch this because you won't be disappointed. Um, and that's TV shows I've watched. I went to the theater on two weeks ago. It was my, me and my girlfriend's two year anniversary. And she surprised me with Les Miserables in uh, London. And that is amazing. And part of my French, which uh, happens to be the language that this order takes this film as well theatre show set um, it pisses all over the film I didn't mind the film didn't mind the film one little bit but I love the songs if you've never seen the theatre show do yourself a favour and watch it it's one of the best things you'll ever see the, the effects the acting the songs are so good they'll be stuck in your head all day like the next day and, and during the week so so good plan to see Book of Mormon very soon I've seen that twice that's amazing um, and that's it guys for everything I've watched. I'm this week cinema wise I'm gonna see the Batman on Sunday. My review will be out for that next Tuesday after or two days after and I'm gonna see um Studio 666 uh, with uh, David Grohl and Food Fighters because that just looks fun. Um, kind of has like an evil dead vibe to it. So I'm gonna definitely check it out this week have a review up for that on the weekend. But essentially that's everything I've watched and I haven't played any video games this month either because I've had no time trying to juggle everything but I'm gonna play Paper Mario I think because I'm feeling like an RPG mood and um, yeah like I believe it or not if you don't know I like Pokemon um, so I'm gonna try getting back into online battles because I've really enjoyed them you can just dip in and out just free, us, free yourself up for a second or two and have a good time but not if you're losing though but guys those are my uh, that's my weekly update so what did you think of all the films they watched what did he did he not like have the same thoughts of me with things like Texture Taser Massacre. Was there other films that you want me to watch? Because there's, there's so many films that, and sometimes people recommend me films. I watch them, they're really good. So I'm going to speak about them here so other people can go off and watch them. But what did you think of my week update, guys? What, what I watch TV show wise or anime or film wise? Let me know in the comments below because I genuinely am interested. But until next time, stay out of trouble.